Okay, well, I'm sure others will continue to uh, join the meeting as we get started, but uh, let me just uh, first by, say by welcoming everybody, thank you for coming and spending time with us this evening. I am Sophia Guinness. I work with Metro Transit on the Blue Line Extension Project and just a couple logistic things, and then I will turn it over to my colleague, Dan Soler, to introduce himself and get us, uh, get us kicked off. Um, you are very welcome to have your camera on during the presentation. It's nice to see faces as we're uh, discussing. If you're having trouble with the audio, like if it's slow, uh, turning the camera off does help with that, as does closing other programs. Uh, the format tonight is we have a little bit of presentation up in front and then plenty of time for questions, discussions, et cetera. Uh, feel free through the duration of the meeting to put questions in chat. It, the speaker might be able to pick them up as we're going, but we'll definitely get to them at the end. Uh, when we get to the end, we will do a combination of taking questions from the chat and um, taking raised hands. So if you know you want to say something uh, when we get to the discussion portion, the, you can use your raised hand feature. And there's two ways to do that. If you go to your participant list, uh, the, and you hover above your name, by your name, you'll see a little raised hand button. It's also in the bottom of your screen. I have it in presenter view, so I, I can't remember exactly where it is on the bar, but it's usually on the right, uh, and you just kind of, you kind of tap it. So with that, uh, Dan, you want to get us kicked off? Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, Sophia, and um, welcome everybody this evening. Um, my name is Dan Solar, and I am with Hennepin County Public Works, and I am a, one of the co-leaders of the Blue Line Extension Project. Um, currently, Hennepin County and Metro Transit together are leading and moving forward the next phase of this Blue Line Extension Project. I've had uh, I've had the great opportunity to work either at Hennepin County or at Met Council previous to that on this LRT project since about 2015. And then prior to that on the Central Corridor LRT project between downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. Um, so I thank all of you for taking some time in what is, I guess I'm gonna say a nice spring evening. It certainly feels spring-like out there. I was just outside for a few minutes between meetings today and it's nice out and it's sunny and hopefully we'll be able to answer some questions, provide some information, um, give you some feedback. This is the first town hall listening session open house that we have had on this project since we revealed and put out publicly some route options to engage the public on for the construction of the, this Blue Line Extension LRT project from Target Field Station Northwest in Hennepin County um, up into the city of Brooklyn Park. And so you'll hear some things tonight about what we've done and that what got us to where we are. And then certainly we want to hear from you. That's the key message of, of our meetings today. So questions, great. Comments, great. Opinions, pluses, minuses, positives, negatives. We like to hear any feedback because it helps guide us in our process moving forward. We've got a very robust and committed calendar year 2021 um, desire, and that's to see if we can't get this project back on track. So thanks, everybody. I'm going to be around, and I'll be here to answer questions and uh, and help provide any feedback as we go forward. So thanks for the time. And we're gonna turn it over to our team to, uh, to go through a short presentation. Thanks, Dan. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna talk a little bit about the project timeline overall so you know what to expect. We'll go over the route wrap, uh, options that were released as well as some next steps as we move through the year. And then, uh, as I said before, we'll have plenty of time for discussion. So a little bit about the project itself. So for those that have been with us for quite some time, you might have remembered this map because we worked on it for quite a long time. And basically in August of 2020, the project partners announced the need to shift away from basically what you see in the yellow because that's shared with freight rail corridor and we were not getting anywhere with BNSF. So I want to acknowledge that many of you spent a long, long time with us at getting, getting to the route here. 
but to move the project forward, we had to go in a different direction because after many extensive efforts with BNSF, including offering to buy the corridor itself from them, we were just at a stalemate. And it was it was time to find a new solution to deliver, deliver this critical regional investment. So we, we re-upped our project team, and many of those folks are on the call tonight, and started to discuss how we would do that. And what we ended up getting towards was a set of project principles that will be referenced many times tonight. And I will kind of really briefly touch on them in a couple slides. Uh, so uh, some of them are, are to do with just kind of figuring out the scope of the project itself. So maintaining our moat, saying that this is still an LRT project that was a, an important component. And then there's things that we always try to think about, like maximizing the amount of riders, uh, minimizing our travel time. So it's a fast way to get around where you need to go. And uh, really capitalizing on the opportunity that we've been given to try to reach even more people and destinations and serve an even broader range of folks. We're trying to keep our project termini and to the extent possible, serve the corridor cities that have been along our previous alignment. We also have other factors to consider, like other metro transit or other metro transit lines that really add to a com the complete system of options within our city. Along with that, the project team also thought it was important to really recognize uh, our engagement goals in the project itself. And, and so not only are we wanting to honor and build upon the engagement that we've done in the past, we want to tailor and adjust future needs as we go through and really bring everybody along and adjust strategies so that we're doing that and really hearing from everybody that we need. So what's ahead? And uh, by the end of this year, as Dan said, we would like to have a community supported route. Right now we have some very preliminary information and we'll take this entire year to build upon it and shape it. So tonight, I'm sure there'll be many questions that all of you have that we are not able to answer yet. Uh, but we will work through a lot of that as we go through this year. We know uh, we to, to really get to an alignment that the community can support, we need to have many more conversations and many more, much more detail. So we have a lot of evaluation to do, and we have a lot of engineering to do. We have a lot of a lot to do. So kind of with that, to kind of give a really big overview of the year is I just went through the project principles. That took a little bit of time to get there. We started to develop what were, what were the options, and my colleague Nick will walk through those in just a moment. And then we screened, and what, we, what, the pro, what you're gonna see from Nick tonight is the project offices, the, our staff, our recommendations of what we think are the best options. And, the, and get, we'll, get, we'll work on getting feedback from all those at the table. We need to refine those routes, and we need to evaluate them. Uh, and then from that, we're not done. We still have a lot of ways in terms of environmental work uh, and uh, engineering before we were ready to, ready to actually have a project that's ready. So kind of through this year, we're in this tier one screening where we've, been, we've reached an initial route options for really to begin this discussion. Uh, you know, there, it's balancing having information and starting the conversation. And you know, the staff doesn't want to sit in the back room and cook it all up and then bring it out. We want we we want the community to know what we know at, at this moment. And so we're working towards as well, getting you know, a lot of feedback, asking for a lot of feedback in this phase. But we'll also have a draft and final report that really gets into a lot of the details that many of you will ask for tonight. So. Uh, Looking at criteria, what does this mean? Where are uh, station locations in the area of the project that is, is new? Um, and then that'll build upon finally getting a final route. Again, you will have to advance that for more uh, engineering in, addition, in environmental work in future years. So kind of to sum that up, by the end of this year, we will have conceptual engineering that'll have um, hopefully the route option and the station locations. We'll be able to talk more about the uh, benefits and impacts and identify the path that we need to do to actually complete our environmental work. Beyond 2021, we know our environmental work will take some time. We'll have to get municipal consent from our cities and we'll have to work to develop construction ready plans 
And those that will include a, a lot more conversations with community about specific details. So kind of this year, we're still we're fairly broad and we'll, we'll keep getting more and more and more into specific needs. So with that, I will uh, hand it off to my colleague, Nick, to walk through the, the various portions of the corridor that all are being treated a little bit different and the options within them. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Nick Landwer. I am the Metro Transit uh, lead for engineering and design for the project. I've been with the project here since, well, I think Dan, Dan brought up about 2015 when we opened the project office. Uh, and uh, I, I also worked on, on the uh, Green Line, the Central Corridor project, and uh, and happy to be here tonight to, to talk a little bit about our, our initial route uh, identification. I just want to, I, I want to put this out there so everybody hears this, uh, that these are initial options that we're bringing forward as a project staff that that were based on the project principles that that Sophia brought up and 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 uh, therefore discussion. Th these are not a done deal. These were what was it was apparent to us for options to go through and and evaluate. But we're looking for comments and feedback. We're looking for hey, what what did we uh, get right here and what did we miss? And 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 let's talk about uh, what, what we're both coming forward with. So uh, next slide, please. So how we how we put this together is that we, we really see this this project, the, the total alignment from Target Field Station uh, down on the south end all the way up to uh, Oak Grove Parkway on the north end as uh, as, as probably three uh, different areas and to break down the evaluation of these routes. Uh, so on the, on the very north end in the uh, gold is area area one up in Brooklyn Park. And we, we believe that we can kind of stick with where we're at on that. Um, in the middle is, is uh, area two going through Crystal and Robbinsdale and uh, very uh, limited in options there because of ge ge geography, uh, geographic uh, and, and, uh, and some other um, elements in the area. And then as we get down in the south area three and that big blue uh, rectangle, we, we have a few more options in there and a lot more to discuss. So um, we wanna make sure again that that the options that we're rolling out here are based on our project principles that, that Sophia brought up. These are really conceptual. Uh, we, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of engineering that's gone into these. Um, uh, we want to make sure that that we're feeding off some of the previous work that we've done uh, on the project and 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 using the the existing project or the the previous project as as much as we can and we just really want to make sure that we're we're using this time to get feedback from the community uh identify where some of the key destinations are and connections that that we'll have on the project so next slide please um this is area number one this is the north end up in brooklyn park and, uh, and on all of these, I'm going to keep repeating that we're um, basing this on our project principles. Uh, this route really, this section wasn't really impacted by our, our 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 lack of ability to come to an agreement with with the BNSF freight rail. Uh, so we we felt that uh, we we could c continue to use the route that we had identified. That this is the route that was brought up in our in 2013 is the locally preferred alternative. We've done a lot of work. Our, actually, our plans are at about 90% for this portion of the project. So we think we're in a pretty good place there. And, and again, they, they meet our, our project principles and uh, we can maintain the existing termini on the north end. Um, and as we get down to the south, we'll, we'll, we'll wanna keep our termini on the south end uh, at, at Target Field Station. That's where we're gonna have to extend the blue line from. Um, the other thing about this this portion is is it does serve some some major destinations. Uh, uh, we have a North Hennepin Community College in this. There's multiple commercial areas in here at at 85th and at Brooklyn Boulevard, and and uh, on the very north end uh, is is where Target's North Campus is. So there's there's quite a a large employment zone up there. And uh, what what we don't show on this map on the very north end is we also have a, an operations and maintenance facility planned for the for the very uh, north end of the alignment. So three stations here that are four stations here that are identified with the with the blue dots uh, with the gold uh, um, or yellow circle in the middle of them. Oak Grove Station that's north of 610 up, up near the Target's North Campus. Uh, the 93rd Avenue Station. This is kind of more of a a, a maybe. A, a, a destination for jobs in this area at 85th Avenue 
station is where North Hennepin Community College is quite a quite a major uh, destination and, and draw for ridership. And then um, Brooklyn Boulevard station uh, towards the uh, south end of this section. So um, this again just re remains uh, the same as, as we had in the previous plans. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so on the very top end of this slide, you can see where we connect in with the blue end. So this here uh, on the map, we show the hatched yellow line as the, the previous alignment that went down the freight rail corridor. So what we tried to do is stay as true to uh, our commitments there and the work that we'd done in this corridor. And in the black, you can see that, that, that basically based on uh, geographic, you know, this, there's lakes in the area, Twin Lakes, Crystal Lakes down in, in Robbinsdale, uh, Crystal Airports in there, and just trying to get a through route through this area and, and stay as true as we could to the uh, previous alignment. Uh, County Road 81 is, was, is really the, uh, the apparent route here that, that, that we're bringing forward. And we can use a lot of the work that we did here. Um, on that gold, there's some ghosted in little dots there. Those were some of the stations that were, were in the previous plans. So at 63rd Avenue, there's a, an existing park and ride in this area. We think that in this area, uh, County Road 81 is, is directly adjacent to the freight rail right away. So, so you know, we can move over into to, um, into County Road 81. We can get a station in that location that's very close to the, the park and ride in this area and stay true to that old alignment. As we move far, a little farther south in the middle of the screen here is, is Bass Lake Road in, in uh, Crystal. And that's a, a point that, that can uh, um, access, gives access to Crystal's business district along Bass Lake Road in that area. And again, we're, we're, we're closely paralleling the uh, freight rail in here. As we start getting south of, of Bass Lake Road, you can see that the lines start to diverge. We start pulling away from, from where uh, the freight rail kind of goes down into Robbinsdale and then dives down into uh, you know what we had referred to as the trench that takes it down into the Theodore Worth Park area. So as we get into Robbinsdale, we've got a little bit more work to do here to, uh, to keep um, work this alignment through the downtown Robbinsdale area and make sure that that we we fit in the area that we can maintain traffic and access the best that we can in this area and we'll need to start identifying uh you know where where the best locations are for stations here that are uh, most suitable for that location as we get to the south end of the map here this is where an opportunity came about uh um a lot of discussion in in previous uh, public meetings and 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 interactions was can you get can you get a stop or can you get us to north memorial can you can you figure out some way to get to north memorial can you put a tunnel to north memorial or a bridge over to north memorial and and it just really wasn't feasible with with the last alignment and with this adjustment uh, uh north memorial could become a a good destination and it's right at the end of the black line where the uh, green and the orange start coming in is is where north memorial is so it gives us an opportunity to to serve another destination and and uh, and and potentially more ridership for the for the alignment. Uh, next uh, alignment. So as we get into Area Three down in Minneapolis, like I said before, uh, it, it gives us a lot more options here. We we need to look at how we can get from that North Memorial, that that south end of 81 uh, from Target Field Station. So we wanted to look for what was continuous through routes that that made sense in the area that, that had enough right away that we weren't having major impacts to residents and, and to businesses. Um, so the map that you see here is, is a right away map that, that shows the uh, roadway network in North Minneapolis. And uh, it, this is one of the, the, the first things that we looked at to see, you know, where can we fit a light rail in here? So uh, our, our light rail with to maintain traffic and keep sidewalks and, and run a light rail in there, you know, we probably need about a, a minimum of 75 feet so this map kind of talks a little bit about the right of way that's available out there so the green uh means that we we have plenty of room to build light rail in and, and keep traffic going and, and all the other amenities and as we start moving down that spectrum into the yellow we're still in pretty good shape but it's when we get into that that darker orange and and the red colors is is where it's very problematic and, and if we try to run an alignment through there we would have uh, major impacts on, on mostly residential in, in, in those areas. So 
The next map here was another one that feeds into our recommendation, but it, this is based on, on the city of Minneapolis zoning maps and existing densities for, for you know residential and commercial in here. And it starts telling a little bit more of a story where you see the darker colors through here. That's the higher density housing and, and commercial districts through there. And it starts pulling out Lowry Avenue and West Broadway it, it kind of stand out in that area of North Minneapolis. Um, so with the area three here, th these are the, um, the, the alignments that uh, the, the project staff is recommending. Uh, and we've kind of broken it down into two things, uh, routes, uh, which are the solid colored lines and then links to get us to those routes. So what stands out here and, and, and kind of started getting to alluded to in the last couple slides was West Broadway route is one that stands out as, as being um, uh, amenable to a, a, a light rail. Um, alignment through it and Lowry Avenue and so, so it's showing kind of Washington Avenue up up to Lowry Avenue in those areas so those are the two routes that, that the project staff's recommending uh, based on the project principles but then it's how do we get to those routes from Target Field Station and so in those dotted uh, colored lines there we we have uh, what we're what we're referring to as links, and these are, are are just some of the possibilities of alignments to get up up north that that we're we're bringing forward, or and and we could use combinations of any of these lines. For instance, um, the blue line or the navy link, as as we're calling it, coming out of that leaves Target Field Station and really followed our existing alignment. And actually, we could probably go to the next slide. I think we have a better view of the links. So yes. This, this probably gives folks a little bit better uh, perspective of how those fit within the community as we're coming out of Target Field Station at the uh, uh, the lower right-hand quarter uh, of, of the of the graphic. But as we come down the, that Navy link, uh, we were able to follow the um, previous alignment coming off the Target Field Station where we were coming down to the six streets uh, a sixth avenue seventh street uh, intersection at grade so coming off of the platforms down there to grade in that intersection and, and previously we were running down also memorial highway in this case we, we'd take that turn up seventh avenue and then um any of these options you know obviously we, we need to get over 94 so we know that there'll be structure of some sort whether we're uh, uh, piggybacking on an existing structure or having to build a new structure to get over 94. There'll be a structure, but uh, follow it seventh up to, to 94 on a structure, get over 94. And in this case, the blue line uh, continues to follow 94 uh, alignment up to West Broadway. Um, another option would be as, as we get up to that green uh, link, that's Lindale Avenue. So, so Lindale Avenue, we could follow blue, to the green uh, at Plymouth, follow Lindale Avenue up to West Broadway. Another uh, link option coming off a of Target Field Station is, is the is the pink option, and this one's a little bit more on the box, uh, thinking out of the box, uh, a lot more structure on it. We'd be coming off a of Target Field Station on a structure, and uh, uh, you can see Metro Transit has the, our Haywood campus and that 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 alignments weaving through the campus. And then uh, shoots diagonally over to right away where those th where the third fourth ramps coming in co are coming into the city and following that right away um, over to 94 and then across 94 on 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 somewhat of a structure or some sort of a structure. Another option from the pink would be to come down at grade at 10th Avenue and then follow 10th Avenue over to Washington Avenue and then Washington Avenue. From there, we can either go to West Broadway on the red or continue Washington Avenue all the way up to Lowry Avenue. So those are the links. Oh, uh, then we also have a, an, an option in there where, where we, we show Plymouth as the yellow as, as being a connector at, at, as some sort of a, 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 maybe a, an option or a companion to one of these other links. Um, so with that, I, I think, uh, Sophia, do you want to take it from here? Yep, I can do that, Nick. Yeah. So uh, tonight and in the next month plus, what we're really hoping to connect with all of you on is, do these options seem right? Have we missed anything? 
initially as you see them, what are opportunities that you see and what are uh, some issues that you potentially see? Where would, uh, kind of thinking about where stations would be desired and, and whatnot. And um, we also have uh, project goals that uh, we, were, we were asking folks to weigh in on. So tonight's meeting, in addition to being kind of recorded notes taking, there's multiple ways that you can provide comments. So we have an interactive map online. So if you want to, um, and I am hearing a little feedback, so if folks can mute themselves, that's often helpful. Thank you. Uh, you, can, you can jump into the map and leave specific comments. We also have a survey. And you can email me directly. This is this is my email. You can provide um, uh, comments to my email, or we have a comment form online. And you know, we also just always want to extend the invitation that we are willing to come to you if you have a block club, a church service, a, a, a rotary meeting, whatever whatever it is. Um, we're we're happy to come and and, and talk with you. So part of, uh, I'll turn this over to my colleague Dan in a second, but just also since we talked about next steps and the evaluation criteria, I uh, just wanted to kind of put these uh, up here for everybody to kind of see right now. And, you know, we're already starting to get feedback on them and we will use the feedback that we have in these goals also to create uh, basically criteria underneath the bullets as well as kind of a matrix of, uh, of objectives to evaluate. So, you know, it's improving transit, improving the frequency and the reliability of the service, maximizing the benefits that come with LRT, supporting the community's desires for development goals and, um, and, and supporting healthy communities and efforts to, you know, address climate change and having uh, transit oriented lifestyles. And then um, uh, this, these two principles at the bottom were initially one, and we pulled this out specifically because we feel it's so important, but to advance local and regional equity and work towards reducing regional racial disparities, also a project goal. So uh, please give us your feedback on these as well. If you have comments tonight, we're happy to we're happy to talk to them. So I will turn it over to Dan to kind of close us out, and then we will open it up for discussion. Well, thanks folks. Yeah, I mean, um you've got a feel now a little bit of a feel with um where we are in the process right now which is really just to re-pivot from a project to build light rail on and in uh in coordination with burlington northern on a freight rail alignment and to bring it back into um not having that be the case finding if we can develop a route that gets this same service in place but doesn't use railroad right away. So as we continue um, moving forward, we spend a lot of time and we've had a lot of time working in these in these four boxes that you see on the screen. So um, we you saw tonight a little bit about the project goals, objectives and criteria and how we wanna move this forward and how we wanna advance this project. We spend a lot of time with our project team in design and engineering. So we'll be engaging with folks on where does it fit? Where's the best place for LRT? Where should potential station locations go? Um, how does it, how does it, a lot of this will be street running LRT likely going forward. Um, how does it fit within the roadways and what are the impacts both um, what are the impacts both to the roadways, but to the adjacent right of way as well? So we can certainly um, take feedback on that, answer some questions on that. We've got a lot of work to do. Down in the lower right, we uh, we know that uh, you know that it's always hard to move on from a project that we invested a lot of time in and a lot of past history in as, in as well. So. Um, we were going down the path of making significant improvements along Highway 55 and Olson Memorial Highway as a means as and as part of implementing LRT. If that doesn't happen, what does that mean? Um, you don't see Golden Valley identified on the map as a potential location for LRT. Um, 
we were going to be next to Theodore Worth Regional Park. We were going to do some improvements along the alignment over there. How do we address some of those needs and things that came up in the previous discussion moving forward? So previous project commitments is a spot that we'll be engaging in and spending some time on this year. And of course, this whole idea of not only the engineering and um, the engineering and um, design aspects related to the construction of a light rail line, but what about other community impacts as well, such as how do we prevent displacement of businesses and houses, both both real and um, secondary that happen when we build a, a, a piece like this? How do we do? How do we provide um, the community and economic developments that go along with an LRT line that can actually help build wealth in the community? And how do we how do we address the positives and the negatives that come along with building a project like this? So we'll spend time in all four of these boxes, and we are working in various parts and pieces of each of them, and. Uh, and that'll be our work through this through this calendar year so that by the end we feel comfortable with community that we've got a route that we can advance to move forward through the process that's both community supported technically um, buildable and uh, and provides the long-term benefits that a project like this can bring so that's our goal that's our hope we thank you for being here tonight um, Absolutely, as Sophia said, we want to we want to be able to you know take comments, answer questions from folks. Um, you can put them in the chat or move them forward. However, thanks everybody. Yeah. So as Dan said, this is the rest of this meeting is dedicated to questions and discussions. So again, you have multiple, you have a couple ways to provide uh, comments. So in the chat, make sure uh, kind of select everybody to everybody and enter enter your comment. I. Uh, or uh, raise your hand, which you can do by uh, uh, hovering by your name in the participant list and clicking the hand button, or it's in the bottom of your screen, kind of it's uh, like a plus symbol. Uh, so with that, we'll just, I'll be quiet and let give folks a second to think about anything that they'd like to ask or contribute. Caden uh, uh, has hand up. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi. Um, I wanted to, yeah, it's Kate. Sorry, it gave me my last initial. Um, I wanted to kind of ask some questions or comment on the green link that goes down Lindale Avenue. Um, you talked about that being a residential area, and I know that because it's my backyard. Um, and so I'm wondering, um, this is kind of the first we're hearing about it and what impacts you guys have thought about for this area. It's kind of the only single family homes in the area and you'd be kind of running right through us. Um, and there's also cul-de-sacs here that the only access point is from Lindale Avenue. And so if you are building a light rail in the middle of it, how would we get home? Uh, Kate, that's a great question. I, I think I can I take a stab at that. Uh, we we do know that that uh, that that it is residential in there, and there's a the the park on on the uh, on the west side of it also. But we we can get the light rail through. The, it's a 66 foot corridor, but all the homes pretty much back up to that area, so we're really not uh, disturbing the the access into into them as far as driveways or sidewalks. Um, we we do know that there there's a couple intersections going through there, and those intersections would likely have to be signalized to you know, to, to cross over the, 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 the tracks if they were to go up that alignment, but we would make sure that we maintain the access into the neighborhoods there also. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, kind of. Maybe to add to, you were still at lines on the map, but we will definitely have engineering drawings that will walk through options of if that is one of the links that really moves to the top, how that would look to the very specific details. Um, does anything else, Kate, before we move on to the next person? Uh, I mean, 
I'm generally kind of opposed to the Lindale line because it is my backyard. Um, and I know that my neighbors feel the same way. A lot of them are a little older and probably couldn't figure out how to get to the meeting. Um, but we're working on having a meeting and maybe we can have you guys come so you can hear directly from them. Mm -hmm. We would love, we would love that Kate. Yeah, uh, feel I mean, free, feel free to connect with me directly on that. Um, Sophia, and especially, yeah, if it was kind of around the various, I mean, it looks like Kate, as I've looked at, as I've looked at, um, and driven that piece, there's kind of specific neighborhood pockets there along Lindale. And sure. We would be happy to, to have some kind of, um, you know, if even, even, I don't know, we can even have outside input, we can get creative on how we can have uh, um, meetings to kind of um, visit and talk about those specific issues that, oh, to that neighborhood. A, we have a specific yeah. circle we meet in, so we can tell you which circle it is. Ah, beautiful. So. Good. Uh, so I'm going to take one more hand and then we'll go to a couple of the questions in the chat and then we'll, we'll get to more hands. So Sean is up next. And you'll need to unmute. There you go. Hello, I noticed we didn't talk at all about the LPA. That's what uh, I'd like to talk about tonight. Is that going to be relevant or not? That's, uh, your, so blue, that's your blue blue uh, listing on the uh, map. Yes. Yeah, so the locally preferred alternative or LPA was kind of the previous um, our previous adopted project. And to the extent possible that we can preserve elements of that former route, we are attempting to do so. Uh, but for the areas that uh, are on freight rail, we know that we will not be able to move forward. Uh, we're, we, the kind of the LPA come, becomes the past and we move, we're, we'll move forward with solutions. Have you considered running up, uh, continuing up Botano Boulevard and then connecting with 169 versus penetrating in a, a almost entirely residential area. As I, so in, in, in Brooklyn Park, um, that there's a many key destinations along West Broadway in oh, Brooklyn Park that, you just had it up there. that we would uh, like to like to reach. Nick or Dan, would you like to add to that question? Sure, I think Sean, what we re when we refer to the difference between the blue on here and uh, you know the black and then the colors is that that segment in that north rectangle is the remaining piece of the previous alignment that we've gone through planning with that doesn't utilize railroad um, right away. And so based on our discussions with both the city of um, Brooklyn Park and our previous engineering, our recommendation there is to continue down the alignment that was previously chosen, meaning to move to West Broadway and then to go through West Broad, Bull, Brooklyn Boulevard, a, st a station by the college at North Hennepin, and then serving north of Highway 610 up in Oak Grove, the undeveloped area north of the Target campus. Yes, in previous um, analysis, that was compared against potentially staying on the railroad corridor, going up through Osseo, somehow moving into Maple Grove, and those we are not putting those um, I, alternatives back on the table and saying we want to keep this alignment on West Broadway in the north rectangle of this project. Follow-up question? Sure. Um, yeah. In regards to the LPA, um, how are you planning on doing that with the limitations you have on how far off of the center of the road, I believe. Uh, you just showed us the graph with the different colors, Sophia. And uh, <clears throat> with the narrow, narrowness of uh, West Broadway right, looking at the MPA area, how do you plan on doing that without, uh, are those people gonna lose their homes or what? So Sean, that's a good question. And that, I mean, that blue segment with those stations is one that was part of the previous design so we've in fact actually completely designed that entire segment of this LRT line with center running LRT. We were we are proposing to reconstruct all of West Broadway from you know just south of Brooklyn Boulevard to north of Trunk Highway 610. We'd reconstruct the roadway, build LRT in the middle, have um, 
Brook, uh, West Broadway traffic in both directions on either side, transition over to the west side of West Broadway, cross over Highway 610 on a bridge and build that to the north. That's been done, That those designs are done. We, there is right away acquisition through properties and along there, very few total takes or actual property acquisitions, but there are certainly back and side and front yard right away acquisitions through some parts of that of that segment. I mean, also as part of that, besides just reconstructing the road and working with the city of Brooklyn Park in that segment, we would also build trails on each side of the roadway. Um, we would also install streetscaping. We would also install street lighting. We would also install fencing along the roadway. I mean, that's a piece of the project that, unlike anything south, stuff in that north part, we've got a design that's fairly far along and uh, certainly could talk about much more specifics about individual properties than in other parts of this route. And Dan, a good tool. A good tool there is on our on our project website. We do have uh, our, our previous plans on there. So uh, any of the plans that are uh, are along that West Broadway portion in in Brooklyn Park are are uh, on the website to to look at, and you can see you know pretty good line work where where the impacts are. And I just put that link in chat for anybody that is interested in it. So just uh, you can scroll uh, to that a comment for me, and it'll take you to those plans. And so it um, in that kind of area one section, those are the most relevant for the uh, folks here tonight. This kind of leads into other related questions. And so I will take two uh, that are kind of related in chat together. And one is asking specifically about potential impacts to Lakeland Avenue, which is a frontage road off of County 81. And just, are we planning to use eminent domain? They've heard that we aren't. So, okay, so I can, so let me start with um, how it will impact homes on Lakeland Avenue. So that is a little different because that's in the black line area in Robbinsdale. And um, in that particular place, we have not laid out what a LRT route through there will look like. Will it go on 81? Will it remove the frontage road? Will it, will it, uh, you know, if the, if the frontage roads are there and have direct access onto properties, we probably can't get rid of the frontage roads in that area. So um, we don't know exactly how it will impact um, homes today, but as we lay out west side, east side, center running LRT, elevated, um, where it might go along that route, how it impacts homes and how to minimize those impacts will be part of how we lay that uh, that engineering design out, and we'll start be, be beginning concepts for that um, here as we work through that Robbinsdale section. Um, my understanding that you aren't planning on using eminent domain is not actually true. I mean, eminent domain and the use of condemnation is a tool for acquiring right away when necessary. That that's different than a project principle, which is to minimize actual right-of-way acquisition and to minimize single-family home and business um, businesses purchase in their entirety. Um, if there are projects that we um, determine are necessary, if they're parts of parcels primarily along here, then yes, we may have to utilize eminent domain as a means to acquire that right-of-way. Uh, just emphasize an important part of that is that we would minimize that as much as possible and um, not want to buy full parcels as possible. Um, so I, let's uh, um, move again to the hand raising and then we'll take more questions from chat. So Jake is up next. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We can hear you at least now we can oh, see hi, you. Jake. All right. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so just I wanted to start off with a comment on the Lindale route. I'm a homeowner in Heritage Park and I think the south end of that Lindale piece, you know, would obviously be, you know, where one of the obvious points to serve Heritage Park, which is a mixed income community and also has a has a lot of subsidized, uh, you know, BIPOC residents. And I so I think there needs to be some pretty strong consideration for, for that uh, piece of it. I also wanted to make a comment about the 
the list of priorities and if racial equity and equitable equitable development are going to be priorities and i think that bullet should really be the first bullet and not the last bullet and then a couple questions to just throw out there and i know again some of these can't be answered right away but i would like to hear more at some point about what the bipoc makeup of the leadership and the project planning staff looks like and how how folks are represented professionally and i would also you know, like to understand a little bit about, you know, this has a, a been a long, a, a long process with this project and we have a new administration where there are rumors of, uh, you know, infrastructure funds coming down the pipe potentially in large amounts. And so I'm wondering if there's been any consideration or talk instead of trying to pick and choose between, you know, Lindale, West Broadway versus Washington and Lowry routes, has there been any, any consideration for trying to go after funding to do both? So maybe I'll take the first question as the others think about the second one. So in terms of the project team, um, I'm not on this call tonight, but our co-project lead with Dan is Sam O'Connell, and she's a person of person of color. Uh, overall, we are a fairly, uh, and we uh, and we do we do have other uh, uh, people of color on or um, other minority groups on our team. We are fairly white. We tend to be fairly white and male, um, but we as we are. Uh, kind of re-energizing the project office. We are being, we're trying to be very intentional um, about hiring diversity. We actually have a associate community outreach coordinator posted now. Um, and if that candidate was a uh, diverse uh, represent, res, representative, especially from the neighborhood, uh, we would, that would be really awesome. So we'll be, we'll try to be very intentional of uh, reflecting uh, the community in our project team, but just do want to acknowledge that we uh, are fairly, are, are, um, are fairly white. Um, and in working with community and and uh, we have some community engagement grants as well that also uh, specifically uh, re try to reach into various communities and work with people that, um, you know, we all bring expertise, but there's a lot of expertise within the community that we want to tap. Um, and we re are really grateful to the folks that are willing to work with us on, on, those, on those pieces. Um, I think that kind of covers the first part. Dan or Nick, did you have time to think about the second? Well, first thing I wanted to mention was Jake. Were you were you talking about kind of the the Lindale Plymouth area right there when you were talking about serving that area, North Side of Heritage Park? Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a couple obvious spots where you could put a, a station to serve Heritage Park, you know, and that's you know that's one of them. And the reason, and the reason I asked that, Jake, is because interestingly enough, in talking with, at, at a meeting earlier today with the city of Minneapolis, they were talking about some of the changes that they see happening um, with development in and around the county service center is close to there. There's a uh, there's some redevelopment happening in there that could serve jobs and serve as a link. So that's an interesting point that you bring that up because it was just something that we talked about at a meeting today. Um, yeah, that, Plymouth, that Plymouth corridor is, is definitely, you know, it's it's prime for a lot of change and this would be a factor for sure. Now we also know that we're also building or Metro Transit is also advancing the D-line, which is for the um, arterial bus route north-south along Emerson Fremont, which crosses Plymouth as well. So that plus this it all, and that's part of the of the planning that we'll talk about as we move this forward. You are correct, Jake, in that, you know, we've just come out of, you know, trying to advance the Southwest LRT project and get our federal funding in place through the Trump administration for four years, which was nothing short of a gigantic and heavy lift, even to move that forward. And the things we're hearing coming out of the new administration are, we really want to see funding for capital projects that build equity check we you know we want to do that with this project that that consider and serve um, BIPOC communities check um, that help drive climate change. So a lot of that is leading to um, you know could it be more than this? I mean, heck, getting this is good. Getting one of these routes is going to be a heavy lift, um, but certainly you know 
this coupled with all the other things that can help serve and check those boxes of transportation improvements that provide equitable service in and around areas that have been underserved in the past will be high on our agenda in getting something um, implemented here. Thank you. I appreciate your responses. I appreciate the open response too about the makeup of the uh, of the team, and I would just encourage uh, to not only for the consultants and participants to to keep driving on bringing uh, BIPOC folks onto your team as you can. Yeah, and and Jake, as we as we engage, we've got we we've got a community engagement cohort now that we've formed with the county and the Met Council that brings in numerous because we can't always do that through hiring we've brought on community engagement help from local um organizations in and around the entire corridor to help get those voices to the table so that we can we can make sure that we really help drive that so yeah and, and i appreciate that i also think there just has to be recognition that you know the the old refrain that hiring can't fix it needs to be addressed also and so leadership needs to think about sure bringing more folks aboard so they can be a permanent a permanent presence in these discussions and really a part of the permanent team because as we all know and i am i am a federal government employee just full disclosure but i couldn't take hud off my i wasn't able to edit my name tonight, i saw so. you had hud on your <laughs> <laughs> uh but that having been said i think we all know too that a lot of the federal employees or you know excuse me government employees we tend to be long timers and so i think there needs to be this acknowledgement too that we do need to uh, part of the reason we need uh, diversity in government is is not just because it's it's the the right thing to do, but also because we tend to be here for quite a while. And if we don't bring those folks aboard, um, you know, it can be a long time before someone retires or leaves, and and there's a, the ability to to backfill those positions. So anyway, I'm going to quit talking. I appreciate you answering some of my questions. Thank you, Jake. Um, I'll take what we'll do one more hand, and then we'll go to chat, and we'll come back to the hands. And um, I don't know if this. Uh, our app? Yeah, it's, my name's Robert. Robert. I live on Lakeland Avenue in Robbinsdale. There was there's four homes that were built not that long ago, and our only access into here is Lakeland Avenue. Did I hear you correctly? That is, since that's our access road, that that probably wouldn't be taken. Robert, we don't, really this, have, we don't really want to have to have our driveway end on County Road 81. <laughs> yeah, and so Robert, good question. Remember, um, yeah, that's a whole one of the whole reasons that frontage roads were built there was not to have direct driveway access points. Are you on the piece of Lakeland that's on the east side of 81, south of 36? Uh, uh, south of 40th, sorry. Yeah, I guess it is. I don't know if it's south of 40th. I guess it is south of 40th. It's, we're right on the lake. Yeah, and on the east side over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think our attempt, at least in the first cut look at this, if I remember, Nick, is that piece of Lakeland would have to stay where it is. Yeah, I, we, we, we did not touch that portion. We, we were able that, to stay within 81s right away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, to the extent that we don't want to bring single family driveways or any driveways for that matter directly on to 81 that will still be our goal yeah okay because i mean there's no way that this thing's going to fit down 81 with four lanes of traffic and a and a rail going down the center without doing something different Th that's correct we we but uh there, there's a big median but so. we're, we're we're looking at ways that we can make it work yeah but we've got a long way to go. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll take a couple from chat and then go back to the hands. Um, so one of the questions in chat is, how is a community supported route determined? What do we mean when we say that? Oh, go ahead, Dan. I guess I didn't see that one, okay. There's a, a, a few folks that um, are having trouble, I don't know why, I'm messaging everyone, but they were able to message me. So I'll have to pick a couple of those those up as we go. Well, that that's a really, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question, Sophia. And it's a tricky one, right? Because um, 
Does it mean that it is supported by every single person in every single community? Probably not. I've not worked on a public works project in my entire lifetime, and I've worked on a lot of them that, uh, that have been fully supported by everyone. I think what we, what we mean by that is that it's a, it's a route that in general that we've engaged the community on, we've discussed it with, and that it has what I guess I would call general support, that it's the best route to move forward with to put um, a project of this um, magnitude in place and to build. Now, ultimately, it will be policymakers, county commissioners, Met Council um, members, the Met Council chair, our city councils in our cities. It'll be those policymakers that are making the final decisions about whether to advance these this project going forward. But I think generally they're going to want to know that we have fully engaged the community and that the community um, in general, supports moving forward. Now, that doesn't mean we've got every single risk and possibility um, answered, but but that we are, uh, but that we are, um, in general, knowing that there's support moving forward with the project. That that I, that is a great answer, but it's it's the kind of the, the best way I can describe on what that means. Thanks, Dan. Um, I'm, uh, just a couple of things in chat. We have a, a, a comment, just a comment, uh, just echoing the need to reach a North Memorial Hospital and that that is a destination that uh, the commenter thought would be um, a, a good thing to have to be able to reach by transit. And uh, another question in chat is uh, just folks adding, for how did you the larger, more readable routes, especially on the southern end. So I had placed a comment in chat that gave you the previous project designs. If you want to see kind of, you know, zoom in on, for example, area three, uh, the, the option to do so is go to uh, bluelineext.org. I'll put that in chat as well. And the interactive map lets you zoom in into it. We also have, for example, the graphics from tonight's presentation on the website as well. Uh, with that, we have many more hands up and we'll get back to in many questions in chat. So we'll take another hand and then we'll take a, a, a few more from chat. So I believe Mike is up next. Did you mean Mike Johnson? Yes, Mike Johnson, uh, you are up. Thank you. I didn't know if there was more mics. Uh, I guess I really have only one question, but first I want to say I have a preference towards the Lowry Avenue route, mainly because it does end up getting a north-south track east of 94, and the west side of 94 between the uh, the C-line bus rapid transit going north-south on Penn and the coming D-line, which will go north-south on uh, Fremont, Emerson, and then to 7th Street, which leads to the question, if you were to go that route of the dotted green, dotted blue line to target field in that area three, is it going to be a problem fitting both the BRT D-line into that space as well as this sort of light rail line? Uh, I think that will be highly dependent, Mike, on which routes we would potentially build LRT track on via which routes will have the buses on them. And you're right. We do come in. The C line does come in on Highway 55 and then goes to 7th Street and then makes the turn and... Um, the D line is coming into downtown a little different. Well, it may not really. I'm not exactly sure. So yes, I mean, part of that will have to be part of what we look at so that we're not like impeding the D line and C line because we're putting LRT tracks somewhere or at the same time impacting the LRT movements with, uh, with um, the, uh, with the, um, bus lines crossing it as well. So th that that's a good observation, really. 
And thanks for your comments on the Lowry Washington piece. I mean, that's part of the part of what we'll have to consider is how do we complement because the desire here is not to replace any of those lines, but to complement other transit service in the area as well. Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, gonna take a few few questions from chat so we get kind of caught up with the folks there. Um, one question is about just studies that uh, that show property value around light rail. And I would say that we have research uh, from the Twin Cities um, the Ling Ling Fan at the Humphrey Institute, for example, uh, has has led some of that work, and we just have a, I think the request is to kind of share some of that data and talk about it in our project, and I, I think that's a great idea taking that in. Uh, and then somebody also asked if if the recording of this meeting is going to be sent out. Yes, we will have it posted on our project website shortly after the meeting itself. And um, uh, to, uh, so we'll take uh, two more questions in chat that I'll, I'll go through and then we'll get back to the hands. Uh, one question is any, basically any plans to update Highway 55 at, in the 5594 intersection? We also got some comments on the map about that intersection being uh, challenging and so folks are just wondering about that. Well, Sophia, that's, I mean, again, that's a, that's a really good question. And we get that. And that goes back to, that goes back to that box that one of the boxes that we showed at the end of my presentation was um, there's a lot of, you know, one of the things we've gotten some, some definitely negative feedback is, oh, great. We saw the construction of LRT down highway 55 from um, Target Field all the way to the BNSF railroad tracks as the opportunity to improve pedestrian crossings, pavement condition, sidewalks, bicycle trails, traffic signals, um, medians, um, stormwater, and all of those elements which um, the community feels has been severely under um, invested along Highway 55. All of a sudden now, if LRT doesn't get built there, where does that leave Highway 55? So hearing that from the Harrison neighborhood, hearing that from Heritage Park, hearing that also a little bit from the city of Golden Valley, we are, that's a Minnesota DOT roadway, that's a state highway right there. Um, so the city of Minneapolis and Hennepin County and Met Council together will continue discussions with Minnesota DOT about how we can implement some of those previously anticipated improvements um, to get some of those things done on Highway 55. That's not a guarantee that that's going to happen. I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to fool people that, uh, yep, it's actually going to absolutely going to be rebuilt, but we're absolutely committed to making sure that we can continue. Um, I know our county commissioner, um, Irene Fernando from District 2, um, there is very committed to continuing to push, um, to continue to push MnDOT to find ways we can get some of those improvements in place. And Sophia, can we answer Nathan's question about the tunnel? Yes, that's one I was going to do next. Okay. It's a question that we get often, and you know, I think Nathan is speaking about West Broadway, but I think we should uh, um, maybe address the question holistically or, or, or through the project is, how do we determine where structures go? Or if uh, tunnels or uh, bridges or anything else is needed, are we considering them? Well, I, I would say I, I can take this one here and uh, I, I'd say air, nothing is off the table right now as, as we are um, going forward with design, you know, we prefer at grade um, center running is the best for, for traffic and, and getting, getting to the, to the community. We, we prefer at grade because it, it's, it's, it's probably less challenging to build, but also it, it's, it's, it's more part of the community and not taken away from the community. As you start putting on structures, you're you're either having stairs to go up or elevators to go up and down, and and really starts uh, making it more of an effort to to access the facility as instead of just being able to walk across the the street and and onto the station and get on a train and go. So um, that that is our preferred method that, to to go forward. Now, if if we need to put in a structure, you know that we'll, we we would look at what the 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 barriers or or what we're trying to get around. You know, for instance, if 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 we're going over 94, obviously we're not going to put a section, an intersection in there. We would we would uh, do some kind of bridge structure to get over it, um, and then we'll look at what the constraints are. But uh, 
Uh, nothing is off the table right now. What you know? What, again, we have lines on a map right now with not a lot of engineering. So we'll we'll, we'll keep uh, considering all, all our options as we, we start moving forward and, and determine what routes what the route is that we're going to pursue. Uh, to, to, add, to, to add to Nick's uh, response as well, uh, you know, when we say when we as Metro Transit say things, we prefer um, at grade running items. Just to give a little bit of background on that as well as. When you start to you know put something below or above you also have to consider accessibility to those that you know maybe just can't use the stairs uh, and then if you have an elevator that breaks all that affects people's ability to access our service we also um we also have to think about long-term maintenance and needs as well as just the initial cost so we have to kind of balance all of those things out and then really justify in an area why some why a structure might be needed to really make the uh, reach the full benefit of the project i think um earlier in the chat you know southwest was re referenced of having a lot of tunnels and bridges and everything like that and you, know, you could kind of look at the project and i think it's willy-nilly but many of the structures are there for very specific reasons whether a corridor was too tight and you went to structure to avoid impacts to residents or businesses, um, that you had very challenging grades, so a structure helped even those out, um, or you had really, really busy roadways and you didn't want to impede your ability to provide a transit and an efficient time. So it, and when we say that, it's not meant to just be like, ah, but there's, there's that is some of the context behind why we say that. Okay. Um, Take one more question in chat, and then there's been, uh, uh, Roy has had his hand up for a while. And the question in chat is just basically, how how might Lowry be affected between Penn and Vincent Avenues? So in kind of that, um, can't do directions right now, Western Western sec section. I think Lowry, again, so we would talk about, you know, when we look at Lowry, we would say, okay, so how would we propose? We would initially say, start with, well, we would propose to build a street running LRT section east and west along Lowry um, with uh, reconstructing Lowry, Lowry Avenue with uh, LRT um, on it um, and then to rebuild the street, sidewalk, utilities, um, bike paths and other elements along there. But what we get, what we still have to figure out is how does it fit? Where does it go? Um, which impact, which intersections remain open? I know Rebecca talks a little bit about ambulances, right? Um, how do we move ambulances and emergency vehicles along with trains? Um, very similar to um, we would have emergency vehicle preemption. Um, we've got some experience in this now. I mean, before when we first started about this, we hadn't built a street running LRT on University Avenue like we have in place now. So we've seen how that works. And so we've got real examples of what what works and what doesn't work and how to build in those things into a street running LRT where you can have similar to what we have on University Avenue in, in St. Paul and in, in Minneapolis um, right there at the border where we've got LRT running down the middle of a street with businesses and accesses on both sides, um, vehicle traffic adjacent to it, pedestrians on sidewalks, bicycles, and those pieces built together. So that's that's initially where where we would look and how that it would seem to operate. Thanks for that, Dan. Uh, we'll let uh, uh, Roy go, and then uh, we have many many more questions in chat. Um, sorry to everybody. A lot of the questions are coming in just privately from setting, um, and we'll we will get to them. I'll read them while we get to them as well. Hi, I'm sorry for the confusion, but actually I'm not Roy, I'm Ron, R-O-N, Williams from Robbinsdale. I, I couldn't change the name right, to make it right. We'll so call you Ron. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, I, I had a question about uh, the alternative between uh, Broadway and Lowry. It, it looks like Lowry is a like a detour Lowry and, and Washington looks to me like a detour and longer. Is that more expensive? I, I don't know. Uh, but Lowry's, uh, the, the Broadway is, it's, it's all businesses and also it includes, it would go right by a YMCA, which may be helpful. So I, I'm wondering what, how do you, how do you choose when, when you have 
uh, Broadway's all businesses. I think Lowry's some, some, some houses. So how do you choose? Well, I think it's more about more, less about choosing and more about, um, you know, continuing to analyze some of the both quantitative and qualitative facts that would go along with it. So yes, which one is longer? Which one of those two routes is likely to generate more um, riders than the other? Which one would serve more direct businesses? Which of those two routes has more key destinations along it? Um, you know, we'll hear, you know, I've heard people say, well, it's gotta be West Broadway. West Broadway is the, the route that serves, um, directly serves the North Minneapolis business community um, right through there. I've had other folks right. say, well, it should be on Lowry and Washington because that gets you along the Washington Avenue businesses up by Upper Harbor, Upper Harbor Terminal and then over. Um, I've had other, you know, so there'll be a lot of that background and we'll have to use both, you know, the, 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 fa the data facts that compare the two versus other versus more qualitative ones on which ones people feel will best serve the neighborhoods and then and then have to make a conscientious decision about which one results in that community supported alignment. Okay, thank you. And part of it is exactly, Ron, part of it's exactly what we're doing tonight, which is to have these kind of town hall meetings, take feedback, answer questions, and get some comments from people. Thank you. Okay, we have a few other really great questions. Um, and one that's easy to address is how can residents get specific, specific questions answered or acquire more information? And basically there's there's two ways to do that. One, our project website you know, is, a, has a resource, is a resource. Uh, sometimes just poking around in it, you can find kind of what you're looking for. And then uh, the project team. If you want to talk to us directly, we want to talk to you. So often the way to do that is to reach out to me and either I can answer your question or we can get you, get you connected with others to do so. And, and, we're, and we're happy to dive into the details with that. Um, so going and then going on, uh, it, this question is about the links and kind of our process with the links. So, you know, are we gonna narrow them down? How do we, how do we get to the, the, the top couple? You know, we have, you know, uh, six or so right now, and we have maybe even a few iterations of them possible. And uh, make sure I'm making sure I'm getting the re full of that comment. Kind of, yeah, it's when, how will we narrow it down? Is there kind of a committee that's doing that? Uh, so, process question. I think it's similar to Dan's last answer. You know, how would we narrow down the links as 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 we're moving forward? You know, what which which routes are are what? How are we um, serving a route? But we, you know, we'll also look at what our impacts are to the other other. I think the the last question on on the on the different BRTs going through the area, how we would uh, uh, coordinate with that work. You know, where the right of way is, what what developments going on, and and. Uh, it, we have to continue doing that engineering evaluation now as we move forward, but also get the feedback of of, of where the best uh, locations the, the community feels thinks that that, that we're going to meet a route or routes. Yeah, I think it's also important to remember that while we show these lines as potential connections, a lot of them are on city streets. So, what is the city of Minneapolis's long term plan for some of those streets? How does development along them get impacted by this? Where does it make sense to go? A lot of them, if you blow that up down there, a lot of them are in and along I-94. And MnDOT actively currently has a project to look at access on I-94, the potential for an HOV lane coming into downtown off of I-94, access into downtown. Someday, ooh, many people are gonna all drive downtown Minneapolis again. Um, we believe. And so, you know, how does how does that? So there's a lot of groups to coordinate with. And then there are probably little iterations on each of those uh, dotted lines that could move it a block this way or a block this way or east or west side of a road. So it'll be it'll be what is the adjacent development is happening? How do we how do we fit 
into the transportation infrastructure, both state, county, city, um, and the other Met Council projects to find the best way to do that. Uh, more, more questions in the chat. At first, I just want to share a, a, a comment that someone provided, which was just to uh, say that they're excited about the prospect of having rail access in North Minneapolis, and they're a near North resident, and so they just wanted to express that to us tonight. Uh, and then a, another question about ambulances you know we have north memorial hospital as well as uh, this the commenter is noting that a lot of ambulances go down lowry avenue how and um so this, the question was specific to how uh what could could they be impacted and, and i think it would be good dan and nick if we just kind of talk about um, emergency vehicle access in term in, in relation to light rail overall as well as we as we address this there might be a question that others have sure sure yeah. i mean from a from a Hierarchical standpoint, and that's a weird thing to say, but emergency vehicles still have precedence over LRT operation for, for movements. And so unlike freight trains where if an ambulance comes upon a freight train, they don't have um, preemption authority to make a freight train stop. Um, LRT trains are a little different. They have the ability to stop at traffic signals and allow um, and allow emergency vehicles to go through. So for example, I'll go back to University Avenue. We've got like three or four hospitals between campus and, um, and downtown St. Paul that have service right near the LRT tracks. There are two fire stations that have three fire stations including the one in Minneapolis and the one downtown actually in St. Paul, four fire stations that are very close to LRT tracks. When those emergency vehicles come through, they put on their preemption equipment, the LRT train stop and LR and emergency vehicles continue to go through. So LRT is a little different than freight trains in that they're not operating in, while they are on their own tracks, they're not in an exclusive right away that that is that doesn't also need to be part of the traffic stream like vehicles um buses emergency vehicles bicycles pedestrians and those other i want to address another question in the chat and it's a resident that lives on lowry and just worrying about their home being taken uh if that was an option selected and uh, maybe the way part of the way to address this is say uh, we're, we're proposing Lowry because we believe that there's enough right away that we wouldn't need to take uh, homes along that stretch, that there's enough right away to fit in an LRT, uh, some travel lanes and a sidewalk um, in some other places, maybe a little bit more uh, to, to, to do with that. And uh, Nick or Dan, anything to add to that question? No, no Sophia, that's a, that's a good answer. I mean, that's the reason why there aren't a whole bunch of other possible alternatives, right? Because one of our goals, one of our project principles is that we would build LRT without acquiring significant numbers of single family properties. And I think many of you here may remember that back when we, before we got to the original alternative, the idea of building it on 10 um, north south from 55 was on the table. That was going to um, require the addition or the acquisition of maybe 100, 120 homes in order to get that done. So not only because Sea line is there, but also because that is a project principle we do not want um, to violate. And so Lowry and West Broadway are proposed because there will be a minimum amount of ac right away acquisitions. I don't want to say none. Um, we don't know that yet, but a definite minimum number um, of right away um, acquisitions that'll be necessary. Uh, so a, a couple extra other questions in chat. And one is just kind of, as we narrow routes, both for the links and the proposed route, will that be announced? And the answer to that is yes. As we refine options, we will be uh, definitely sharing that information, both kind of formally within a couple of reports um, and sp and specifically with reaching out to community as we as we narrow as th those things down. Um, there is a couple questions also in chat 
about options that the project team, I think, is not recommending. So we had them kind of tucked at the back of the presentation if they got asked. But it, it is about, um, we have one specifically about uh, Emerson Fremont, um, and then on, and then another one about Lindale um, in, in between West Broadway and um, uh, Lowry. So I'm just going to go to those slides real quick. And basically, Emerson Fremont, we're, we're the project team's not recommending right now, even though there's it kind of fits on the right of way map because of our metro metro networks well the d line d line is going to start construction here soon on emerson and fremont so that would yes, be sorry, a direct conflict yep and, and uh and in and, and sorry nick i didn't mean to cut you off um and then in the that section of lindell that's above um north of, uh, west north of broadway west broadway it's, it's very residential and the houses are actually quite closer nick do you want to elaborate on that one at all yeah, the, the, this section uh, is 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 very tight right away through here. The the houses front front uh, uh, Lindale in this area, and there there are driveway accesses, and then and there's quite a few more cross streets through this area. So it would have a lot more impacts to that neighborhood. So to kind of sum that up, for I think both options we're not we are not uh, recommending, but like we kind of said before, no options off the table. So. If there are if there are reasons that we should explore them further, uh, the project team is open to listening to that. Um, I might have forgotten. Did I skip over Fred in the hand raise section? Fred, did I skip you? I want to give you a time to speak now. If I did. Uh, for some reason, we can't hear you. If you are if you are trying to speak, um, we can try to get your question in chat. If if that's an option as well, I don't see the icon for audio. Okay. Um, so another question in chat is about our interactive map. And about the oh, there's Fred. Oh, there's Fred. Try unmuting again. He still can't hear you. There we go. All right. Oh, maybe not. Fred's unmuted, but we still can't hear him. Don't know, Fred. I don't know why. In, in my version, I I don't get the audio icon from you. So maybe audio is not fully connected. Um, so this, I'll, I'll just take this question. If maybe Fred will be able to figure out his audio, and we'll give him time in just a second. But it was a, a comment, a, a feedback on us a, 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 about the interactive map, and in that um, we use the mouse to let you zoom and zoom out. And that the, the the comment of having a kind of click in, click out, like as um, instead, make it a, a, another option when you're on uh, the computer. And we are implementing that. If it's not on the map already as an option, it will be soon. And I think um, Rebecca has raised her hand. And then I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions uh, after that. Rebecca. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. So I'm just wondering, in an eminent domain situation, what is um, just compensation? What do you guys consider just compensation? So, on a typical that that that's a that's a really good question, Rebecca. And so, if there is a need to acquire any part of any private property as you know commercial or residential whatever it may be um there's a very there's a very both federal and state statute requirements to follow to move forward with that so the determination of the fair market value for that property acquisition we would 
as the proposing we whoever the proposing authority would be met council hennepin county um the city buying a property would would hire an appraiser to do an appraisal of that property to determine the fair market value for a property offer the pro the the government side also pays for the homeowner or business owner property owner if you will themselves to get their own appraisal of that property and then to negotiate that um purchase price um of course the property owner has the rights and wherewithal to counter proposal make a counter proposal on those offers and then also has the right to utilize a court commission hearing and and eventually even a court hearing in itself to negotiate that final price so it's very it's very established in law um it is meant to be able to um you know allow for the public to acquire right of ways in order to build public projects that have a public purpose with the caveat that property owners are to be paid um fair market value for both the property value and for the property impacts caused by that acquisition so it's 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 fairly significant and um if that is the case on any specific property there's quite a long process to go through to get to that to get to that final number and negotiation okay thank you okay uh, in in chat, we have uh, a few folks just kind of uh, expressing different um, opinions about routes, and uh, uh, both sides of the coin. Uh, some folks on the uh, southern portion of Lindale that are are wanting to get the word out to more of their neighbors, and happy to do that with you. And then also just a comment about uh, pushing us to reconsider. Um, that link between West Broadway and Lowry on Lindale. And so I think that covers a lot of what we had in chat. I, I, if I missed your comment, I'll give everybody an opportunity to just re-put it in real quick if there's any last things. But otherwise, I think we are at time. And we just really want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and could give some closing remarks. So as many of you pointed out in chat, you know this is the first time uh, folks have been hearing about some of these proposed options. It, it is very new and we really would like to spend the time with you to connect with your neighbors, to connect more deeply into the community and talk about these options and keep folks with us as we as we move forward. Dan and Nick, anything else that you would like to add before we say goodbye? I think it's important to caution people that, you know, this LRT project began as the concept of the Northwest Corridor back as long as 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and we're now at a new phase of advancing this project. And though people are hearing of these new routes for the first time, number one, that's good because they are actually hearing about it. We're getting this word out. But this is not a project that's going to be, I mean, this is a long process and a lot of work. And so we are happy and excited. I'm very, I'm always very pleased when we're able to put things like this together and actually get people to come and provide comments, provide background, ask questions. It absolutely positively helps us move these discussions forward. And you may not be aware of this. I am, of course, that there's a lot of our team and elected officials teams and our project partners teams that are on this call as well. And so there's a lot of folks that are hearing these comments, seeing these, and uh, um, and we'll have many, many meetings like this. And this, I know that um, Sophia will be absolutely diligent about connecting with any of you if you want us to come out and do some specific things in Robbinsdale, uh, Long Lindale, in other parts of North, we're happy to do that. Um, Brooklyn Park, um, Crystal, wherever, wherever any of you are. So thank you for the time tonight. Thank you for giving us some of your time. And uh, um, it was good to, good to have, have this meeting today. Yeah, great, great conversation and thank you. 
thanks everyone. If you have any thought follow-up thoughts, uh, post this meeting. There, feel free to reach out to us and we look forward to connecting with you more.